And now I'll move on to a report uh, regarding the appointment of the varsity baseball coach for the spring 2015 season. I will also state for the audience and for members of the public that all handouts and minutes, um, once we have minutes in draft form, are available on the district website and that typically happens well in advance of our next meeting. The minutes are not considered official until they've been approved at a school committee meeting. So the following report is meant to directly address allegations, questions, and concerns regarding the appointment of the varsity baseball coach for the spring 2015 season. To date, the school department has spent many hours responding to questions from the public regarding this issue. This report is chunked into three sections. First, I summarize broadly the allegations and concerns that I distilled from numerous individual meetings and from a letter. What I did to investigate the concerns and the basis of the concerns. What I found through that investigation and a summary statement. So the allegations and concerns generally fall into three broad categories. There were concerns about the transparency and thoroughness of the process employed by Mr. Beck and Mr. Sudnick to appoint the varsity baseball coach. There were qualms about what could be perceived as undue outside influence. That's a direct quote from a letter I received in the decision-making process and that policies and guidelines were not followed in the process of appointing a coach for this year's spring season. So what did I do? I responded to all emails from parents and community members. I offered to call or meet face to face with individuals in order to fully hear and understand their concerns. In these meetings, I summarized individual concerns and reported some of these perceived issues at our February 23rd, 2015 school committee meeting. These perceived issues included a perception that there was a lack of alignment between the vision and mission of, athletic, of the athletics program with policies and practices, and a perception that some parents have more influence over others with regards to decisions affecting the athletics program. It is important to note that these are perceptions and at this point in time, those have not been substantiated. The Hadley Public School Network Administrator, that's important because I am not that person, somebody else with a totally separate security clearance in our email, conducted a search of email records. I personally read and reviewed all emails to and from Eric Sednick, Brian Beck, Donna Moyer, my own emails, Jordan Branson, and school committee members between March 2014 and March of 2015 in which varsity baseball was discussed, and all emails pertaining to Coach Branson. When reviewing emails, I looked for evidence that would substantiate the aforementioned allegations. I asked Mr. Beck and Mr. Sednick directly the following question. Has a parent ever directed you to hire or not reappoint a coach for any reason? Both Eric and Brian responded no. I spoke with former interim superintendent Donna Moyer. I specifically asked Donna about her recollection of a school committee vote or policies pertaining to the hiring of coaches. Ms. Moyer did not recall the development of any such policy or a formal vote. She suggested I review school committee minutes from 2013. I did so and have included content which I will read from school committee minutes in December 2013 in which athletics was discussed. I have reviewed personnel records of the former coach and Eric Sudnick. I specifically looked for any evidence of the former coach filing a complaint against an administrator, any evidence of discipline against the former coach any evidence of disciplinary action against the AD that may cause him to seek retaliation against an employee. I reviewed all postings for coaching vacancies from June 2013 through January 2015. I reviewed the composition of all interview panels for coaching positions since Mr. Beck began as principal of Hopkins Academy. I reviewed the interview questions for the varsity baseball coach, 
I reviewed the criteria used to evaluate the interview responses of each candidate for the varsity baseball position. I reviewed the basis for the recommendation of Mr. Reeland as varsity baseball coach. The findings in the review of emails. And, and this part, uh, unfortunately some of these were difficult to read. Several emails include allegations of parents about other parents, parents about coaches, including allegations of favoritism exhibited towards certain players, acrimonious exchanges between coaches and parents, parents indicating student athletes had not earned their position but were simply given playing time based on their last name, and other allegations. I questioned the administration about all complaints and allegations that were brought to their attention. Both Mr. Beck and Mr. Sednick were clear if administration received a complaint that could be substantiated. For example, a parent claims to observe a coach offering additional practice time to some players and excluding others. The administration brought the concern to the coach's attention, would ask the coach directly if the complaint had any basis in fact, and of course the administration would determine whether or not they had observed themselves any such practice. Based on the coach's response, the administration would direct the coach to modify his or her behavior or dismiss the concern if it did not have a basis in fact or could not be substantiated. I found no evidence in any emails or in my conversations with Mr. Beck and Mr. Sudnick of the allegations delineated in this report. When I spoke with our former superintendent, Donna Moyer, Per her suggestion, I reviewed the school committee minutes of school year 2013-2014. At the February 23, 2015 school committee meeting, our last meeting, an audience member stated that she believed policies and procedures were in place when she left the school committee regarding the hiring of coaches. In December 2013, Beck and Sudnick gave a presentation on the athletic program. The minutes from that meeting read as follows. This is taken directly from the school committee minutes. Presentation of Hopkins Academy Athletic Program. Athletic Director Eric Sudnick states that he strives to bring fairness, accountability, and integrity to the position. Sudnick has worked very closely with HA Principal Beck regarding the program. The hiring process of coaches was discussed, including criteria, education, and evaluation. Coaching positions are reopened each season and former coaches need to reapply. Some job postings are in-house only, some in local papers. Hiring committee is impartial and will choose the best candidate. Once a varsity position is filled, that varsity coach will be enlisted to aid in junior varsity hiring. Sednick holds a preseason coaches meeting where expectations are discussed. During these meetings, coaches meet with Hadley Transportation Director Patricia Hoff to discuss bus protocols, and HA school nurse Carolyn Sorrentino does blood-borne pathogens training and distributes medical forms to coaches so they are prepared for medical emergencies. Coaches are required to take several National Federation of High School Sports courses booked through the MIAA on coaching fundamentals, first aid, and a concussion course on the NFHS website. Sudnick monitors coaches throughout the entire season. The season is concluded with an end of season meeting. Sudnick conducts evaluations of coaches which are then signed by the coaches and sent to the superintendent. Sudnick is currently working with Beck to start a running club in the spring engaging numbers for a possible cross country program in the future. These are directly from school committee minutes December 2nd, 2013. These minutes were unanimously approved without revision on December 16th, 2013. At no point did any committee member request a revision, addition, or deletion to the minutes. The composition of the hiring committee is not specified in the minutes. It states that the committee is impartial. It is my expectation that all Hadley Public School hiring committees are impartial. If a member of an interview committee could not be impartial, the individual would recuse himself or herself from the committee. As an aside, it is my understanding that there was discussion at the time of hiring the varsity basketball coach in which two outside people were invited to sit on the panel, both of whom recused themselves because they knew they were familiar with the candidates. It is important to note that giving an employee feedback is expected of every supervisor 
and does not compromise a supervisor's ability to be impartial. Based on my experience this year, we have adhered to the conditions discussed at the December 2nd, 2013 school committee meeting. In a review of personnel records, at our last school committee meeting, a parent indicated that not reappointing Jordan Branson as varsity baseball coach could be perceived as an act of retaliation by Mr. Beck and Mr. Sudnick. When reviewing personnel files and emails, there's no evidence that Mr. Branson ever made a complaint about Mr. Beck or Mr. Sednick that would cause either party to retaliate against Branson. Furthermore, there's no evidence of disciplinary action against any of the aforementioned parties. So against what would somebody be retaliating? There is no documentation to support the claim that Beck and Sednick retaliated against Branson. Documentation pertaining to hiring procedures. Coaching positions were posted annually from June 2013 through January 2015, as stipulated in the Unit A contract in December 2013 <coughs> school committee minutes. Interview panels for coaching positions from fall 13 through spring 15 consist of Mr. Beck and Mr. Sudnick. There are two exceptions. In spring 2014, Mr. Sudnick, on his own, interviewed for the boys' middle school baseball coach, and in fall 2014, Mr. Beck interviewed for an interim varsity girls soccer coach. In instances where there were no other qualified applicants, no applicants were interviewed and coaches who expressed an interest in continuing were reappointed. There was no evidence of discriminatory or prejudicial interview questions. Criteria used to evaluate applicant responses were not discriminatory or prejudicial. The reasons provided for recommending Mr. Dan Vreeland as varsity baseball coach include, but are not limited to. His accountability and sportsmanship reign high, on his list of team expectations. Mr. Reeland brings teaching, skill, and structure. Mr. Reeland has coaching experience at Hopkins Academy and has shown an excellent balance of accountability and rapport with students. He has expectations of the students while still being very approachable. In addition to the statements above, several parents have spoken highly of Mr. Reeland, including parents who've expressed dismay at Branson not being selected. Written guidelines pertaining to hiring for extracurricular activities are as follows. The non-union employee handbook states an employee may resign at any time by giving written notice to the employer and the employer may terminate employment at any time by giving written notice to the employee. Employment is considered at will. Page four of the non-union personnel handbook for Hadley Public Schools. Coaches are non-union employees and therefore employees at will unless they're protected under a different contract such as unit A. Coaching appointments per the school committee and in the minutes I read to you are annual appointments. Paragraph 4.1 of the collective bargaining agreement for unit A states the positions referring to extracurricular activities will be open each year, but the person who held the position the previous year will normally be given first consideration. In filling such positions, primary consideration will also be given to qualified teachers employed by the Hadley school system. Mr. Br so in summary, Mr. Branson was not terminated. He fulfilled the entire term of his annual appointment as a varsity baseball coach for 2013-2014. Hadley Public Schools posted the varsity baseball coach position per school committee minutes and the unit A collective bargaining agreement. Mr. Branson, Mr. Vreeland, and another candidate were given consideration. <coughs> Hadley Public Schools offered the position to a qualified candidate from a field in which there were three qualified candidates for one position. The candidate who was appointed also happens to be a teacher in the school system. I can find no compelling reason as to why I would withhold my approval from Mr. Vreeland's appointment. Moreover, I am entirely supportive of Mr. Vreeland and Mr. Vreeland's appointment. He is a skilled educator who consistently demonstrates his commitment to students, maintains high expectations for students on and off the field and in the classroom in all aspects of their behavior and effort. And his personal and professional demeanor reflect well on Hopkins Academy and Hadley Public Schools. We are fortunate to have Mr. Vreeland working in our district. I look forward to supporting Mr. Vreeland and the entire varsity baseball team this spring and I encourage the Hadley community to do the same. In addition to the report on varsity baseball coach appointment, 
I also have information about the athletics program self-study timeline. The Hopkins Academy principal, the athletic director, physical education staff, and superintendent will complete all elements of the self-study in April and May as it is delineated in the recommended booklet that we talked about at our last meeting. We have requested the assistance of sitting and retired athletic directors, principals, and I have been in contact with one assistant superintendent who has a law degree and is well versed in Title IX and gender equity. These individuals will be invited to conduct a one-day site visit. During the site visit, evaluators will review our responses and supporting documentation, conduct focus groups with various stakeholders, and identify commendations and recommendations. We anticipate having a site visit in June. All report findings and any recommendations will be shared at a public meeting with the school committee once the process is complete. We, the next portion of my report is regarding the evaluation tool for the superintendent. We're tabling that discussion for our next meeting when Humera is present. I also have included the proposed district calendar for 2015 and 2016. Labor has voted in favor of the calendar and closed. School committee will need to discuss and vote the calendar this evening. And included in your handouts is the personnel report for this month. Are there any questions on any parts of the report? No. I have a, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, sure. Go ahead, Tina. I have a lot of questions, and there was a lot of information you gave out. So, will we um, actually be able to get a copy of that of your report? It will be a part of the minutes and all the handouts, and all of it goes on the district website. So, under what forum, forum or how can we actually sit down and discuss this report with you? Anybody can make an appointment with me to um, have a conversation about questions about the contents of the report. Absolutely. Just as I was willing to meet with anybody prior to writing the report and that factored into developing the report. Absolutely. But I think there's a lot of parents here that would probably like to be part of that meeting. So I don't know if sure. we can have a one-on-one -on -one or if we get sure. school committees right before that. Because there are many questions I have based on what I just heard. Many. Okay. Depending on the nature of the question, as, as you're well aware, I can state again for the rest of the public, not specifically to you, Tina, but certainly um, depending on the nature of the question would dictate how much information I could provide. So if there were ever specific questions about personnel, um, the personnel have to be present. It's solely yeah. about your report. Okay. Your findings in your report. Absolutely. I would like to talk to you about. Sure. Sure. So, you'd be here until midnight. So. Okay. Absolutely. Um, so what I would say immediately is that people can, um, if, if it seems as though there are a number of people with similar questions who are looking for similar information, if anybody wants to kind of take a lead in, in organizing a meeting with folks mm -hmm. and with me, that's great. If individuals would like to speak to me, as you know, and I think has been your experience, you can call my office at any time um, and I will I'll, I'll meet people during the day. I, I've met people on the weekend. I will meet people in the evening. So it's whatever works for folks. Go ahead, Lisa. Um, so I understand that um, you're going to do a self-study report. Mm -hmm. Is the school committee also going to work on hiring and firing policy procedures? There doesn't seem to be any substantive policies. I guess one of my concerns is um, you know, Principal Beck said that he uses a high consensus for change when he was talking about the schedule, but when he's talking about personnel changes, it seems to be a low consensus for change. And are we going to have policies and procedures, or are we going to keep that status quo? Uh, I don't totally know the answer to that. I think that I, my understanding is the self-study will look at the way mm -hmm. positions are advertised, the way the hiring is done, the mm -hmm. committee used to do the interviews. Whether that results in policies, I think, will depend on the results of the study, mm -hmm. would be my guess. I think in the February minutes we had said too that if there were policies that needed to be developed coming out of that study, that that would come to the school committee policy um, subgroup to handle. So yes, they would be involved in that way, and then any of those draft policies would be brought forward for 
a full vote. So I think to answer your question, it, the analysis, the review has to happen first to identify what is needed by way of those policies, and any district policies do get drafted and approved by the school committee. Okay. I have a question about the surveys that the um, athletic director gives to mm -hmm. sports teams. Mm -hmm. And I was told by Mr. Beck that it was a requirement of the school committee that every sports team is given a survey after the end of the year. Is that correct? No. I, I really, uh, Molly, I'm sorry, but I think that was when Molly was chair. Molly and Donna had a conversation about implementing surveys. I didn't know there were surveys <laughs> at the end of an athletic season until you told me, Tina, during you this. So it that. was not, it is not mandated by the school committee. And I guess I would ask, ask I wish Mr. Southern was here, um, maybe Mr. Beck can answer the question, but has there been any other team given a survey other than baseball? Yes. I know, I know, yes. so, I know girls has, softball was. Yes. What about, um, has soccer? I believe so. <laughs> I think both girls and boys soccer was this season. I don't know if the, no, I don't know if the fall no, sports did or not oh, really? off the top of my head, but oh, no, I it was, I they no, were. and both, so both fall and winter. Students still need to fill out their service. Yeah. Winter may have already Winter been implemented. Already did. There, I just so. received all of them in my office. I but I'm not. I'm not office. certain on both of those. Just to so. clarify, we've never. We don't see the results of those surveys. Right. No. No. Can I clarify though? Why would some sports get surveys and some not? not? I, I, I think it was the a, fall sports was an oversight. Right. So I don't, my, my son played fall sports. He never got a survey that I'm aware of. Right. That the, well, but but I think the idea of the survey started perhaps in 20. In the, 13, I think. Yeah, in the course of the winter right, yeah. of last year. And so the and spring season would have been the first time that it would have been implemented. So last spring was the first time that it was implemented. There was an oversight this fall. We have all of the winter surveys in. So last spring was done. We have all the winter surveys in my office now. And what we do is tabulate. Um, it's not a, it's, it's just additional information. That's all it is. So it's given to all the athletes on a given team? Is it given to an athlete that might have left the team mid-season? It's given only to the athletes that are on the team. I don't believe that we give them to athletes who have left mid-season. One of the things that also we're asked to address in the self-study and, and some things that have come up, a theme that has come up repeatedly when I've met with parents starting back in the fall is this idea of trying to understand, conducting some sort of exit interview around athletes who elect not to return to a sport and why they don't return. It's been a common theme since the fall. It's also something that is addressed in the component of the self-study. So obviously when that question is asked, the response would be no, we don't currently do that. And that would be an example of a recommendation that anybody visiting would say, you should probably do that and here's some ways to do it. I, uh, we were told that the, those studies, that those um, surveys were used to determine if the posting goes internal or external. So we were told that by Mr. Beck. So No, it, just as a source of data in the evaluation process. Right, but you had told us that that's why you decided to go external with Coach Branson's position. And my thought is, if we're going to put such high value on these studies or these surveys, they should be reliable, they should be validated, they should be collecting the information that would lead us to that position. And so I think we should do them consistently if that is the benchmark for going internal or external. And hence my request for some policies and procedures so we can be consistent across sports, boys and girls, varsity middle school, mm -hmm. instead of arbitrary. Mm -hmm. Well, if I, if I could correct, it, yeah. it's just a, source of in, a single source of information in that process. It's not the de single determining factor. Right, but in our conversation you said that was the reason based on the I wouldn't surveys. have said that because that wouldn't have been the reason. I talked about that as being a source of information in the evaluation process. And I, I just want to be very careful here too that it sounds like um, there's uh, just a, a difference in understanding of that conversation, but I think this is a conversation that, what, if I may, I'm sorry, but what I've heard you say, Lisa, which is an excellent point, is that if we are going to use surveys in any way, that paying close attention to the qualities of those surveys should be of paramount importance to us. 
And then the only reason I'd like to move away from continuing this particular conversation is we may be getting dangerously close to talking about something far too specific, it, it even implied about any sort of employee. So I'd like us to just stop with that. But what you said is very important. We said that if we're going to use surveys, then um, the purpose for which they're used should be very clear. The quality of those surveys should also be agreed upon. Um, and so we should take a close look at those across the board. Thank you. Sorry. No, no, I was going to say the same I, thing. I would just like to say I think the majority of us here have uh, overwhelmingly uh, like great support for Mr. Breland as being the varsity coach. Nobody's saying that he should not be var the varsity coach. I think a bunch of us are just, um, or the group of us are just very upset with the way Coach Branson was terminated so late in the season, now he can't get another job. And there's never re really any clear explanation on why he didn't return. And when you explain the situation, when he takes a, a team like that to the, uh, to the states, people are like dumbfounded why you wouldn't hire a coach back like that. It's like telling Bill Belichick, you're not coming back because for whatever reason. Well, I think high school sports are a little different than the Well, I know, but it's just that when you right. take somebody to that level, so then he wasn't brought back. But, but again, Jim, which we've said so many times, right. that number one, he wasn't fired. He finished his I, appointment in 2013, that. or right. whatever year we're in now. But he had such support 20, by the players but, and the parents, and, and then he wasn't brought back. So we're just saying, you know, why? And, and then we and heard you reasons that- will never that, know, just like I will never know. Go ahead, John, I'm sorry. We, you know, we just heard that we're going in a different direction. We have a different philosophy. That's the only reason, that's the only thing I have ever heard why he wasn't brought back. It wasn't his qualifications or anything else. And it just seems that it was just, it didn't seem right you would take a coach that did so well and bring him to the States like that. Had so much overwhelming support by parents and, and players that he wasn't brought back. It just I, doesn't fit. I totally understand the confusion. I was just as surprised as I'm sure you were when I received the email telling me. Right. But what I have to accept, and I hope that all of you will accept, is that this was a personnel issue. We have no purview over personnel right. issues. You have no purview over personnel issues. So I'll never know I'm the sorry. facts why he wasn't brought back. It's just that he was chose not to brought back because <coughs> Mr. Breland had better qualifications or something. We'll never find that out. So, If, if I may, I will sure, reiterate yeah. again that we have three qualified candidates. Oh, I understand that. No, I understand that. one totally. position. And I, I want to reiterate that. There's also a third candidate that I'm, right. I'm not going to mention my name who is who was highly qualified as well. Right. The but but the, just the whole, when you look at this whole thing, when a coach does so well like that, and he has so many things going for him and all his parents support, and he's not brought back. It's, it's dumbfounded. It really is. I have to say, it's, it's, it's hard to you know, put your arms around. It really it is. It feels very inconsistent with the rest of the athletic program. I'm sorry. Oh, I didn't hear because I'm, I'm sorry. I'm Mary. Yeah. Um, I just said it feels very inconsistent with the, with the rest of the athletic program overall. It's the only time it's ever been done. I mean, there have been coaches that probably should not have been brought back, and they have been brought back over the years. And you have somebody that's as fantastic as Jordan, and the support you have by, like I said, the parents and players. It's, it's, it's a shame. I'm not sure I totally agree with you, Mary, in, in at least my tenure with having a kid in Hopkins. There have certainly been situations where coaches that did not have the support of the school community didn't come back automatically. But the coaches that did have the support of the school community, I, I just feel like right. the vast majority of the time, if they, if they left after such a short time, there was usually a, an obvious reason, I guess. Right. So. There's no obvious reason. And like I said, we give our full support behind it. Coach Reeland, I mean, great guy, and the kids seem to really love him, and we don't really question his, his uh, coaching skills or, or management skills, but it's just very, very confusing for the rest of us un to understand why Coach Branson was, was not rehired. And nobody's addressed that in, in a very good answer why he was not. So can I just ask Annie your question? 
I mean, instead of, I guess, focusing on why he wasn't rehired, focusing on the fact that somebody else was hired because mm -hmm. the position was posted externally. Mm -hmm. As we said, every position would be posted mm -hmm. annually. My question would be, what's the determining factor of what's posted externally versus what's posted internally? Because you mentioned that they're handled differently, and I don't know what the criteria are around that as to what makes us choose to go externally and seek external candidates versus mm -hmm. internal posting. Do we have guidance around that? So there are specific criteria as to when we would go external and when we would go just simply do in-house postings. It was really important to note in this case that only internal applicants were interviewed. Right. So the external posting did nothing. There were no external candidates <laughs> interviewed for this position. There were three employees of Patton Public Schools who were interviewed for this position. Um, the hiring supervisor, and I'm sorry to put you on the spot, Mr. Beck, but typically when you or Mr. Sudnick are having a conversation about what you would choose to post on the school spring or what you would choose to remain in-house, how do you make that decision? It, it's at, um, totally at our discretion. There's no guidance in there. We know that we have to post it, and while many schools simply rehire coaches from season to season, knowing that we have to repost it, we also have to look at candidates. Um, very often you don't get applicants if you don't post outside. This spring we posted for all of the positions, baseball and softball, outside to get a look at what potentially might be out there for candidates and potentially for interest. So and I did. expect a result of the self-study would be to have a consistent practice all the way through. Yeah, and I think less costly over the last couple yeah. of years, less costly approaches to posting outside have yeah. become available. Right. Yeah. Um, and I think many schools probably didn't post outside from season to season in the past because it costs money to put an ad in the newspaper. Mm -hmm. but. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, being an employee at the Hadley Public Schools, it was always my understanding, and I could be totally wrong or mistaken, I'm, you know, I'm not sure, <clears throat> but I thought that we were always told that internal postings were for the first 10 days is that right? And, and it, they post it, I'm pretty sure this is what we were told, internal posting for the first 10 days. And then if there's no qualified applicants, then they usually look externally. That was always my, that was, you know, my understanding as an employee of the Hadley Public Schools. But again, I, I don't know, but wrong, again, but I guess, what, I, you know, <coughs> Mr. Horgan has said to me in the past. And I guess what is clear is that the results of this self-study will uh, hopefully result in better predictability and better consistency. So, and if I may also just with regards to that, the school committee minutes from December 2nd, 2013 that I directly quoted, it simply stated some, and keeping in mind, uh, Paula, that, that what you're referring to also are expectations around the unit day contract, which I try to adhere to both of those as I did in this case, to evaluate to make sure that we didn't violate the unit day contract, that we didn't violate anything in that personnel handbook. The coaches may or may not be members of the Unit A contract. Right. And the school committee mi minutes indicated that co positions may be posted internally or externally. The school committee minutes nowhere indicated how that decision would be made, how it should be made, or what those expectations were. But just to echo what Linda has said, it's clear based on this conversation <laughs> that a clear set of criteria, which will only make it easier for central office, Mr. Beck and Mr. Sutton going forward. Mm -hmm. I said one more question. Oh, Molly is before you. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> I just wanted to clarify. So those minutes, that's definitely the meeting that I'm recalling, you know, with the school committee. Mm -hmm. so I, I, I could picture uh, Mr. Sutton and Mr. Beck sitting there talking. So, mm -hmm. so I'm glad you found those same mm -hmm. Um, but I just wanted to clarify, when you were reading that, um, th were those minutes articulating a, a practice going forward? I mean, no, sort of what I read, and which will be in a report that I post, and I will also ensure we have... Sorry. Um, I have asked that since I've been on board, and I believe we went back an additional year, but I have asked since I've been on board that all minutes since I've been superintendent are posted to the website. That I don't know that that was necessarily the practice before, but they are all there. I will also, because these refer to minutes that predate me getting here, I will also make sure of nothing else. Sorry, a minute here. 
I will make sure that, sorry about this. I will make sure that the minutes that I referred to are also posted. Uh, Molly, what I read is exactly what was in the minutes. There was nothing that in its entirety about athletics. So I didn't delete something out. I didn't paraphrase oh, no, I'm not that. that. Yeah. I, I, so there was nothing in the minutes to indicate that there was something agreed upon going forward. There were no. Well, you said that the school committee voted. To accept the minutes. To accept. To accept the minutes. To accept so, the so minutes. in other words, yes. Okay. So December second, this is the conversation. Right. Then at the next meeting, you had two meetings in December. December thirteenth, you had another meeting. Mm -hmm. At that meeting, when you're looking at the meetings of December second, they were approved without any revision, without, and that was important to me because there was some conversation about, well, didn't we agree that it, there would be a hiring panel comprised of X, Y, and Z? And if that had been important. It was within two weeks, nobody said, wait a minute, actually what we wanted, there were no recommendations for revisions or any changes to the minutes as presented. Right, and I think again, interpretation of impartial. When I heard you reading that, that's exactly my recollection was that it would be impartial, but in the context of the conversation mm -hmm. we were having, that impartial meaning that it would include mm -hmm. um, external individuals. And I can certainly see your situation now, you're stepping into it years after the fact. And that may have been a period of time where we didn't have, um, we didn't always have uh, somebody officially taking. No, I think that was when Caitlin was doing it. Yeah, so my, they my were, recollection they were in of that, that meeting, excuse me, is that we didn't talk about hiring. We were more concerned about coach training. And that was what we deliberated on the most, was about the training and, and the, the ongoing supervision of coaches. It wasn't, I don't remember hiring. The big change in hiring coaches came when they were given one-year contracts instead of three-year contracts. But that happened several years ago. Yeah, I was just trying to understand when, when you were quoting it, if it was supporting that that was the suggested practice going forward or, or not. Mm -hmm. and so you're saying it was just kind of taken out of context, therefore you can't contextualize it and say that yes, that was an agreed upon practice. I, I can only take what's presented to me in the minutes. I, I can only do that, and, and I'm only comfortable taking directly from the minutes, because the minutes refer to capturing the conversation, people then looking at them two weeks later and saying, yes, this is an accurate reflection of the conversation. What's dangerous for me to do when I try to, not because everyone believes that their memory to some extent is infallible, and throughout this process, I can tell you that I have had conversations with five different people who remember a conversation took place, but the retelling of what it was included in that conversation varies. So, there, so I, I have to rely on the minutes. I can't rely on recollection. I, I, but you weren't here. Yeah. There's yeah. nothing else you can do in that, in that mm -hmm. But, you, and while you can't rely on recollection, I didn't, when after the school committee meeting last month, when you said that the school committee had adopted policies in practice, I had no memory of that, of that specific action being taken by the school committee. So I too went back through all of the minutes and did not find any policy created, any practice created, anything being put into writing that said, this is the system going forward. I do think we will have that after we complete the self-study. Thank you, except that was the final thing I was gonna say. I would hope then that will not find its way into the practice, the documented practice. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Which may not be a policy of the school committee, but we can, uh, we will adopt it as a policy if it's appropriate to be a policy of the school committee. We will review the practices and ask that they be followed. Mm -hmm. All right. I know that many of you will never be happy with this decision. I'm sorry for that. I hope for your support of this year's baseball season. I hope for your support of the Hadley schools, especially at town meeting. Please bring your passion for the Hadley public schools to spring town meeting, which will be May early, early May. We will let you all know. We'd appreciate your support. First Thursday of May. Thank you. First, first Thursday in May, which would be 
Seven. Seven. See you at town meeting.